Step 9. Clone verification. To verify that our plasmid have the insert that we wanted to introduce, we are going to cut them with Zone 1 and BAMH1 and separate the resulting DNA fragments on an agarose gel. Right now I'm going to set up a restriction digest with the plasmids that we just isolated. For one reaction I will need 16.5 microliters of double distilled water, 2 microliters of NAV buffer 3, 0.25 microliters of ZO1, 0.25 microliters of BAMH1 and 1 microliter of plasmid DNA. I also prepared 3 new Eppendorf tubes for the restriction reactions. In order to avoid extra pipetting, I'm going to prepare a master mix and then split it into three aliquots, one for each of the plasmids. In the master mix, I'm going to put three times the amount of all the reagents, which is 49.5 microliters of water, 6 microliters of NEB buffer 3, Point seven five microliters of ZO one and point seven five microliters of BAM H one. I will mix up the master mix and put 19 microliters of it into each of the new tubes. Then I will add 1 microliter of plasmid to each of the reaction tubes and mix it up by pipetting. As usually, I incubate restriction digest at 37 degrees for 45 minutes. Then I will run the cat plasmids on an agarose gel. Let's have a look at the gel picture. You can see that for each of the clones I run uncut factor along with the cut one. In the case of clone 2, where there is no fragment coming out, uncut lane allows me to see if any digestion took place. In the case of clone 1 we have 3 bands. One for linearized vector, one for vector without insert, and one for the insert itself. 
Also, this gel allows us to verify the size of the linearized vector and of the insert. The bottom line here is that both clones 1 and 3 contain inserts, and the inserts are of correct size. Hey, we've got the clone! One last thing we have to do is to put this precious clone in the special corner of refrigerator, known as the clone library. Thank you.